Hello, Wadjab Doer here, and today we've got another cookbook review. And um, this one here I actually wanted to do a few days ago uh, for the 4th of July, but we had a little bit of an earthquake, something that looked kind of like this. Um, only, uh, the thing was, that kind of killed the power to the, the house and, you know, made it so a little bit of disturbance where we wouldn't have time to actually uh, do any recipes and whatnot. But, you know, this little recipe here is, uh, you know, 4th of July, American, and who's more American than Snoop Dogg? All right? So he has this here cookbook. Um, from Crook to Cook, Snoop Dogg, Platinum Recipes from That Boss Dog's Kitchen. And uh, I've looked through this one a little bit already, of course. Oh. Hmm. Aftershock here. Alright, so we're clear. And uh, inside here we got a. Uh, let's see here. From Cook to Kitchen. Snoop Dogg. Covers breakfast, lunch, dinners. Desserts, drinks, parties, has a little biography in case you don't know who Snoop Dogg is. An index, um, which I always hand to have. Afford by Martha Stewart, a little welcome to his kitchen, in his pantry, fridge, top of the spots. And so it begins here. We've got some uh, Snoop Dogg, Afford by Martha Stewart. Kind of talks about how they met, a little bit of history on them. Going to his kitchen, talks about what he has in his pantry here. Um, explains his pantry, talks about his fridge, what's in his fridge, explains his fridge. Uh, let's see, top of the spots. There's some places he likes to eat around the United States, I believe. Maybe just LA. Uh, I got breakfast stuff. And, um, you know, this, this book has, you know, nice pages, nice, um, text to it. They, um, usually has like an intro for each chapter for breakfast, lunches, and dinners, and snacks, and parties. They'll have some nice pictures in here for some of the recipes. Other recipes, they won't have no pictures. Um, they'll have nice stuff like this right here. Graphics. And, um, what are we talking about? Thickness gravy, biscuits. You know, like I said, we're in the breakfast section. And then there's parts here. Look at that, Billionaire's Bacon. Mile High Omelet. They, um, talk about, like, like see here, OG Munchies. This is some of his cereal favorites, so you can get a little more in, in, into the depth of his character, per se. Lunch. Talks about some of his um, thoughts on lunches here. Once again, he has some chopped salads here. Here's everything in here from uh, good grub, old uh, fashioned food, you know, to um, even lobsters in here. And of course, salads. Here's one here. And, uh, you know, a little centerfold here if you're into that kind of food viewing. Fried bologna sandwich. OG fly baloney. Uh, let's see what we got here. Some good old Mississippi catfish. And um, in the back here, if I can flip around real quick. He has Asian dishes inspired. Uh, he has some candy. What he likes to use for candy munchies. He has a recipe for uh, gin and juice, in case you're into that sort of thing. Other other drinks in here, and he has a, a thing for Thanksgiving as house, um, and then beats and bites. So he has some uh, some different choices of soundtracks to play while you're cooking some meals. And uh, what else we got here? We also have oh beats and bites again, California rolling for making the sushi, some biography there about the dog, and index, which is nice to look things up. So, 
for this cookbook here, which I think is nicely done up and made, um, the recipe I'm going to try is something that, you know, is all curious about uh, Snoop Dogg, and it's, it's something she can really bake with. This is his Bow Wow Brownies and Ice Cream. Now, the recipe is not for the ice cream. It's mostly just for the brownies. But we're going to make this today and um, add a little special ingredient, if you know what I mean. So stay tuned. Well, let me also add on this before I go. This book here is, uh, let's see, $24.95 originally. You can probably find it for less at some booksellers. And it's not that old. I think it was 2018. Double check here, though, if they have a intro in here. I don't see it, but for some reason I thought it was 2018 it came out. So it's not too old, not too hard to find. Hardbound, nicely done up. And uh, let's get to the cooking. All right, let me go over some of these ingredients. This here serves six. Um, you need, for the hardware, an eight by eight inch uh, baking pan. So you want to butter that and set it aside. I'm actually I'm using, um, what am I using? Parchment paper. Yeah. So that's some uh, parchment paper over here. Right there, see? In a pan, getting ready to go. And um, it won't add any flavor, but it will add non-stickability. So then, back to here, we got our ingredients for the uh, other hardware. We'll need a mixing bowl, a saucepan, and um, a whisk, and probably a spoon or a spatula. Now, other ingredients here, we got some, let's see, two-thirds cup or 90 grams all-purpose flour. That's another thing I like about this book, is they have, you know, different measurements. So two-thirds cup, 90 grams. Um, a quarter teaspoon baking soda. They have a half a teaspoon salt. Uh, let's see, they got here a half a cup of granulated sugar, or 100 grams. Uh, three tablespoons unsalted butter. Doesn't really point at them here. Um, two tablespoons of whole milk. Not that 1%, not that 2%. But I believe it's like, you know, 3 or 3.5 above it. Or it might just say milk on it. And that will be the, the whole milk. Now that almond stuff either. And then uh, two and a half cups of, or 450 grams of milk chocolate morsels. Two large eggs. Uh, half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And then your favorite vanilla ice cream for serving and chocolate sauce for serving. Um, since this is uh, Snoop Dogg's Bow Wow Brownies, um, I'm going to be adding a little, uh, a little something. You know, in the top here they talk about what Snoop Dogg likes to add, you know, with his little secret ingredients. I too have a little secret ingredient I'll be adding later. And um, of that secret ingredient, I believe I'll be adding a cup of it. Yeah, so just hold on, let's get to the works here. Okay, now, so step one is actually preheating your oven to, um, to 325 Fahrenheit, or 165 Celsius. Now, I want to hold off on that just because I don't know how long this is going to take, but if you're a quick mixer, go ahead and get it done depending on how fast your oven heats up. So step two is basically your two-thirds cups of all-purpose flour, and you whisk in there, yeah, your uh, quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Alright, so we just kind of get in there real, nice and good. Other things you can try is maybe sift it in if you want to, if you have a sifter, but apparently this is not necessary for this. Alright, that's mixed, done, set aside. On to the next step. All right, so in our medium saucepan over some medium heat there, we're combining our uh, three tablespoons of butter and our two tablespoons of whole milk. I'm going to get on this. All right. 
two steel spoons or a whole milk here. One, two, and our sugar. Or, uh, get in there. Let's set that aside for a bit. Right, or half a cup of granulated sugar. Hmm, I I should hire a sous chef or something. Alright. Pop that in there. Let me get us some whisk. <laughs> melt, butter, melt. Um, so then what you do with this here is you bring it to a boil. Alright, so I'll let this uh, boil away slowly. I'm going to wait till this butter gets melted all the way first, and then I'll turn up the heat on it. Alright, so here we got a boil. You can see bubbles. Not too much of a rolling boil. I'm going to cut the heat off. And then what we do is we're going to add our uh, chocolates, our one, not the whole chocolate, one and a half cups of our chocolate to mix in. So, uh, and these morsels in like so, and let them melt while you stir it around. All right, and let me get the other portion of chocolate in there too. All right, keep stirring till it's well incorporated. Let's see here. Get nice and thick. Uh, all right, with it off the heat now, and your chocolate incorporated here, you mix in your half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Give me some of that here. And then you want to work in your two eggs, your two large eggs. Now the thing with eggs, if you ever made something or you mixed them with something hot, they like to turn into scrambled eggs real easy. So, I'm going to give this a few stirs, get that vanilla extract in, give it a little feel. It's still supposed to be pretty warm, so I'm going to just try a little bit, kind of temper it in. And hopefully we don't get any kind of scrambling of the eggs here. Because that will be an interesting uh, omelet there. Uh oh, there's a big piece of egg. Mm-hmm. Just work that in here. Seems to be not cooking at least. Let's see if we can get it combined. Scraping the sides of my pan. All right. I'm going to use another egg here. Get a yolk in there, see what that does. Mm. Now we're getting a little bit more saucy saucy. See that? Almost got that yolk in there. Mmm, you smell that? Smells good. Good chocolate. And we'll work the other again. Alright, so. Luckily, I did not make any scrambled eggs. I'm going to continue to stir this in. Scrape those sides down, scrape the bottom. 
Make sure I get all that chocolate incorporated with the egg mixture and the vanilla. All right. Then what you do is you want to work in your flour mixture that you've done before. Yeah, kind of play on that for a little bit there. Okay. So, this here is done. Now we'll work in our flour mixture. And you just want to get this combined. You don't want to get it super stirred. Mm -hmm. Combined you. There we go, a little bit of overhand, underhand method. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting back to a battery. Hetera, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, I just add the rest of this in. And stir the bejeebus out of it. But just so you can combine it. The left hand stirs so you can see better. A little bit of folding over action, right? I'm going to capture the flour. You don't want to spread the flour on your countertop for this recipe. Okay. that in there. There, now that is mixed. No clumps, no bumps. And now we get ready to pour it and add the secret ingredient. Okay, now I'll put this over the side here and uh, get ready to put it in the pan. And now it's time for the secret ingredient that we'll be adding to it. And uh, no, now not that. There are there's some green tea and basil to make some uh, basil green tea later. Let's see, can greet in this right here. We got some M and M's, you see, and uh, not only any M and M. These here happen to be 50% cow cow dark chocolate M and M's, right? Because uh, you know, if if you haven't forgotten, Snoop Dogg and M and M goes good together. So. What you just do here is you pour your batter right into your pan. Let it spread out nice and evenly, so. And if you want to upgrade your uh, spoon, I already tossed the, uh, the whisk. Whisk is not good for chocolate in some cases. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's no good. You can um, upgrade it to a uh, silicon spatula. Oh, you want see? Sorry, sorry. To really help uh, scrape this here out better. Yeah, you see that kind of action right there? Yeah, nice. I actually probably can't see it because you're all stuck in the dough here. Let me back it up a little bit. All right, so we'll scrape off the sides and get it all, all in right, the pan. Back now look at this here. Right, that's a well-scraped pan. Silicone, like I said. Is there nothing it can't fix? and make better. Alright, with that beep noise, that means the oven is preset to the temperature, preheated. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit more here. Get back in those corners and sides. And if you didn't do it this way here, with this secret ingredient, the um, other kind, or I should say not the other kind, but the other thing, what, what you would have used is actually a cup. You would reserve from the two and a half cups 
one cup of the uh, chocolate chips and you would sprinkle them on top you know, like so if you were to use the other secret ingredient um, green tea which I would not use green tea but um, that you'd probably mix in with the batter now since I clumped these all up horribly I'm just gonna you know spread the wealth a little bit more and get these M&M's uh, ready to go you know because sometimes M&M likes to act up alright so you got that there lick the batter no because raw egg in here I'm gonna scrape off here so I can burn on the side scrape off back to the batter alright and now into the oven and right in the oven it goes right in the middle and we're going to time it for about 15 minutes after 15 minutes uh, we're going to rotate the pan uh, 90 degrees so 15 minutes on the timer alright so it's been in there for about 15 minutes getting well baked and we'll open the door here and rotate the pan using a glove of course it's still pretty gooey ah, just grab it rotate the pan and now we're going to have it bake in there for another I'm going to say 12 minutes 2 to get more heat back in from opening it and 10 minutes for it to chill well, cook. Alright, so after about, what, 15, 12, I don't know, 27 minutes or so, it says 25 to 30 minutes of uh, bake time, we got this here. Now you can see the uh, crust there on the sides, right? Nice little uh, cracks in it, just like from the earthquake that happened. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to let this cool down a bit and then uh, get ready to cut into it and devour some. So, I'll let it cool. Now granted, if you want to eat it right now, I'd say let it cool, let it set up a little bit longer, make sure, you know, the quake stops with the baking. And, uh, you know, I have it on a wire rack right there to help it cool evenly. Uh, sure, it'll probably still cool from the outside in. Outside in. But, um, yeah, so I'd say get it at least 10 minutes before you cut into it. And then it'll still probably be warm. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time here to cool. I'm going to actually take some of this and um, set up for a little sampling time. Alright, now's the time to try this out. It's been a few hours since it's been baked. And I'm going to be sure in this. I'm going to cut this right, right about half. Okay, right about half here. And, I'm sure it's good as is, but um, we'll try to um, put in the old nuker. Give it a little warming up here. Alright, and so, it's not going to take a whole lot. Come back here in the darkest area of microwaves. And uh, let's see here. Here we go. And we'll do, oh, five, six... Eight seconds? No, ten. Okay, so a minute. Alright. And check for heat. Let's see here. You can feel the bottom's pretty warm. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't left in the fridge or nothing. So we'll bring it over here, and we'll uh, slide one into this bowl. And, oh, and slide one off into here. All right. So then we're gonna like that, and then we can just add some uh, ice cream. So we got some vanilla right here. Oops. 
I'll print like so. And, uh, right. Not the best pitch, but it's time to partake. And, uh, I get back with, um, all right. So out. here we are. It's actually the next day. Uh, last night, uh, me and someone else had some of these brownies. And, you know what? I don't know if it's that I haven't had a brownie in a long time or a real good brownie in a long time. But as you can kind of see in the picture here, maybe, you know, it had a nice crust on top. And of course, the edges have that nice brownie crust. And, you know, the, the bottom is nice. And it's, it's just like you, you bite into it, and it was just a little, you know, crusty and then kind of light, but nice. Um, Density it has a nice light density to it though, and it is good. It is smooth It is delicious Polished it off with some ice cream that we mixed up as you saw earlier in this video and uh, And uh, we both enjoyed it real good in fact this morning I uh, you know had a few more bites of them from the pan and uh, it's still good of course and now another thing so th this is a solid recipe for Brian that's for sure legit, but I'm um, Another thing about this cookbook that I haven't pointed out yet was uh, from time to time there's sparts parts where you have this kind of fancy design here the flip right and so when they have the flip there it usually adds a little bit more um, information you know a little bit more maybe a change to the recipe that you can make and do and uh, let's see more about this cookbook it's nicely bound I thought it's uh, Chronicle Books, you can see that there, publisher, and it's got on the shelf, and um, you can actually buy it for, you, know, you can probably buy it for any price on, online still, but um, I've seen them around, you know, $15 or something like that, you know, it depends on if you get it new or used, there's going to be different prices out there, and uh, the availability is still there, so, you know, you know it's, it's from um, October, of 2018th is when this book came out and let's just say if Snoop Dogg ever invited me to dine at his house I'd be on it you know this food's legit it's good um, you know the pictures are fun here we got a picture from his uh, down under lobster Thumidor recipe right he actually said he got that from going to different countries I think to get the recipe and uh, you know, there's there's different dining situations like you know parties of like Thanksgiving, uh, parties at his house, game day, football time, Domino's, beach seafood remix, and you know what? This book is definitely going back up on the shelf as a keeper. Eventually, I like to try more recipes from it, and uh, yeah, I support this cookbook. So if you want to just try something different, you know pick up Snoop Dogg's book. The only thing I would add maybe as a little caution is maybe with some of the language used in it and wording which I'm sure came from Snoop himself I would so yeah PG-14 rating just because there are you know a little bit of uh, maybe bad words or maybe some situations in there that you know you'd want well I guess in general though most kids well some kids do cook younger ages but uh there's some some situations you might not want a younger child to be around, although around 14, you should probably start you know teach them you know the rights and wrongs of things, and language-wise, you know there's no horrendous bad words in this book, but the you know the the wording is a little for older kids. Let's just say that. Hmm. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, you know, leave them below. And um, if you have any other cookbook ideas that you want me to review or look at, let me know. And uh, if you enjoy this, hit the like button. And thanks for watching.